Assalamualaikum and welcome back to the program Islam Explained. I am Vaisal Gentrolo. Today we'll be answering your questions, questions that have been put forward by yourselves. So if we have enough time, we'll try to address all of them. So without wasting any time, we'll ask our questions to our theologian. Welcome back. Thank you, Vaisal. Yes, Anna. here we are again. Thank you. Uh, one of our viewers asks, God is all just, but then why do we have people who are rich and poor, some living in comfort whilst others struggle to find food? Some are very healthy and others with disabilities and illnesses. Okay, we can call this uh, an argument from justice or injustice, or we can say that uh, this is an argument that originates from human compassion, human mercy. But in reality, we have to understand that, and this is very important to make this point, no one can possess mercy and compassion more than God, because that's where they originate from, what he said. So, no one can claim to be more merciful or more compassionate than God. And then we, could, we can look at the issue of injustice. Is there injustice there? Is there injustice here? We have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is malikil mulk, which means he owns everything anyway. He's the owner of wealth. He's the owner of our health. He's the owner of our bodies, our soul. He's the owner of everything. So in that regard, there is nothing unrightful here, and there is nothing unjust here, unjust here. In reality, we can look at injustice this way. If I own something rightfully, it belongs to me, and if it's taken away from me unjustly, then I can, I can claim injustice. But what does belong to me? As I said once before uh, on our conversation, uh, if God had said to me or to you, for example, give me back everything that I have given you, what would we be left with? Ultimately nothing. nothing. We possess nothing in the first place. That's correct. Yeah. So everything comes from him anyway. So he owns everything. So in that regard, if we are less fortunate in, in some way or not, it's his wealth. And I use this really humorous analogy in regards to this. And I say, if we are, uh, if we are gathered somewhere, you know, let, let us say there are 10 of us in this gathering, and then suddenly this man walks in and he's one of the richest men in the world. You know, someone like Bill Gates. You know? yeah. And he says, look, I'm feeling, feeling very generous today. So I'm going to start writing checks to all of you. And then he starts writing checks. And then he says, here's one million dollars for you, John, for example. Here's one million dollars for you, Ali. You know, he starts giving... Uh, checks to different people in the room yeah. and then he comes to me and he says you know Omar here's hundred thousand dollars for you and then he turns to you he says Vaisal here's ten dollars for you check yeah. all right now would you have right to say to him you are acting unjustly this is unfair it's not ours so we can't if the money is not ours we didn't earn it he That's would right. say what are you talking about it is my money I can give the, the, as much as I want, to whom I, I want. So God gives us all of these equipment, including our wealth and health, our bodies, our limbs, our organs, without asking anything in return. Yeah. It came from him, it originate, uh, originated from him. So it's a gift from him. We cannot complain and say this gift is not in, uh, complete. There is something missing here. We would be in the wrong for that. That's not injustice because it belongs to him anyway. One last thing in regards to this sure. question. This world is, a, is temporary. We know that. It's transient. It's fleeting. We are here on a test. We are not here for eternity. So what happens in the test? We are trying to attain an eternal life. And we may be tested with different various things. We may be t tested with poverty. We may be tested with weak health. You know, we may be tested with various things. They also say, uh, they also say uh, that we, people are being tested with their wealth as well. Of course, we, we are being tested with wealth. With wealth. wealth and poverty as That's well, right. both sides. This right. test depends on uh, which human being it is. So we go through different tests in the world. Yeah. yeah. So I'll just ask another question that's been put forward. So another viewer explains that the Quran says, what comes to you of good is from Allah, but what comes to you of evil, O oh man, is from yourself. Hmm. But in your previous program, you said God creates both good and evil. So is there a, uh, a, contra a contradiction here? 
Actually, though, no, there is no contradiction there. The worst that the viewer asks is, مَا أَسَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَسَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّئَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكِ So, everything that is good comes from God, and everything that is evil, it happens because of our own doing. This is what the worst says. This does not really contradict the creedal arc, uh, article of Islam, part of Islamic Aqidah, which is min Ta'ala. God creates both evil and good, good and evil. Mm -hmm. Now, why doesn't it contradict it? Because, because creation of evil is not really evil, but committing evil is evil. They're mm -hmm. two different things. So, creation of evil is not truly evil, but acquisition of evil, requesting it, that's what human beings do through their free will. So can you give us an example? Just yeah, like for example, I can give one <laughs> example there. There's a verse, of course, Wallahu khalaqakum wa ma ta'alamun. Allah says ta'amalu. Allah creates both you and your actions. He creates us and our actions too. But our actions are acquired by us because we have free will. Mm. So if we wished to do an evil act, Allah will create it for us. God mm. will create it for us. Why will he create it for us? If he did not, that would negate our free will. That mm. means we, we, are, we are not giving free will. We would be robotic creatures, only follow a certain path, very similar to the animals. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us free will. So we like to do different things and the way we wish to do it. So when we decide to do something, when we intend to do something, he creates it for us, even if it's evil. Creation of that evil is not really evil. We acquire that. We ask for it. So our act is evil there. Act of asking for it. Act of committing it. And of course, sometimes we have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates things for, with many purposes. So, for example, creation of fire, we mentioned before, has many, many good purposes. You use it for energy. You use it for light. You can cook your meals on top of it. But if someone goes and places their hand in it and burns themselves, can they say the creation of fire is evil? Yeah. Or they can't. Or burns the place down. Yeah. So there's a, there's a purpose yeah. there. There are many, many, many multi-purposes there. Yes. So, Omar, you said in our previous episodes that God has infinite knowledge and therefore he knows what happens in the past, what is happening right now, and what will happen in the future. This means that he already knows who will attain the eternal paradise and who will be punished. If this is the case, why does he put us through this test on earth? Okay, this is an interesting question too. This is, and I, I like to thank our viewer who asked this question. Now, I and I heard this from a number of people because it is a, a philosophically it is a bit confusing question as well. Now, yes, Allah is the all, all, all Allah has infinite knowledge. He is omniscient. He knows all past, present, future. But the thing is we do not know. Now, let me give you an example with that. You know, if, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, said to us, I will not put you through this test on earth. I will create the day of judgment directly without us going through this test and assessment. And on that day, he says, to a certain person, for example, he says, look, I, you, I will be sending you to punishment in hell, Jahannam, because if I created you on earth and tested you, you were going to be a sinner. I know it with my infinite knowledge. Wow. Yeah. What would that person say? He would say, you never gave me the chance, oh my Lord. Yes. I know you have infinite knowledge, but you never gave me that chance. You never put me through that assessment. You know, is this fair? Yeah. And a person that, you know, would enter paradise, you know, others would say, why is he going into paradise? Because he hasn't been tested. That's right. he, hadn't, he hasn't achieved anything. He hasn't proved himself. He or she, of course. So we can also use, for example, uh, the analogy of a teacher as well. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Teacher knows, for example, a good teacher knows which student will fail and which student will pass, yeah. will get high marks. Now, if t because of this knowledge, if the teacher said, you know, I will give you marks directly without putting you through an assessment, would that be fair? No. Yeah. 
because the, 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 the child who would fail would say, you know, why you never gave me this chance. Maybe I would have worked hard, you know, studied, you That's know, right. and yeah. maybe I would have, you know, achieved good marks as well. So, in a way, God knows everything, of course, whether we are going to be successful or we, whether we are going to fail. Whether we deserve heaven or hell, you yeah. were going to say so something. So, ultimately, basically, is for us to uh, not be able to turn around and say we weren't given this chance when we do go uh, to either heaven or hell. Exactly. So, we will have no excuses because we will live it ourselves. In fact, we will learn about ourselves because God knows us. He knows us very well. He created us. Yeah. But we will, ourselves, we will learn about our own selves. Awesome. This is the reason why we are put through this test on earth, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Omar, so, um, so there will be punishment on the day of judgment, but yeah. some people say, does, uh, does it not contradict God's infinite mercy and compassion? Why would a God of loving um, love uh, punish his creation? It's a good question too. In fact, if we look at historically, in theology, both Muslim and Christian theology, Jewish theology as well, the monotheistic religions, you will see that within Christian theology, this was called theodicy, the problem of evil. And it had affected many people. You know, why does God allow evil? Why does God, you know, uh, get people punished? You know, uh, it should be a God of life. He should be a God of love, infinite mercy, infinite compassion. In fact, 113 surahs of the Quran begin with Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Mm. The all merciful, the all compassionate. His mercy is infinite. So why would he punish people? Because justice requires it. God is all merciful, all compassionate, but he is also all just. Mm. Adli mutlak. So imagine a person who kills hundreds of innocent people, men, women, children, and there are people like that. If this person is not punished on the day of judgment, now can we really say God is just then? No. No, that's right. What happens to the victims? You know? Exactly. So not punishing, not punishing a monster would mean being merciless to the victim. That's right. So justice requires punishment. Justice requires a day of judgment, accountability. We see, you know, as human beings, we try to establish our own justice system here too, in, on sure. this temporary life. So justice is needed, true justice is needed. So there is no doubt that God is the all merciful. He will forgive many people. There's no doubt about that. In fact, once I heard of this narration, it's a very interesting narration. Uh, it is said that on the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala releases his infinite mercy upon the heavens, it will engulf all the heavens, all the heavens. It will it'll be so immense and vast that, according to one narration, one report, even shaitan, Iblis himself, will look upon the heavens, see this amazing uh, mercy, and he will think to himself, I wonder if I can get a share out of this as well. Yeah. So this is how infinite the mercy of Allah is. However, we, we need to understand that all of those who were wronged, oppressed, cheated, tortured, killed, they will ask for justice on that day as well. And therefore, true justice will prevail on the day of Din. Maliki Yawmid Din. The judgment day. So, Allah is all merciful, he is all forgiven, forgiving, but also he is all just. And uh, in order justice to be prevailed, to prevail, some people need to be punished as well. Yeah. Just as some people need to be rewarded. That makes sense. Yes. Makes a lot of yeah. sense. Thank yeah. you, Omar, for uh, yeah. the uh, questions being answered, the uh, questions that have been put forward from our viewers. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully... Um, we thank you for joining us again on this episode. If you have any questions, please write to us on the email provided uh, on the screen below. And we'll see you next time on the program, Islam Explained. Thank you and bye.